Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to show you guys the difference between stroke and drop shadow inside of Photoshop and how to apply both effects. So in order to apply either drop shadow or stroke inside of Photoshop, it's pretty intuitive. You right click on the layer you want to apply the effect to, you go up to blending options, and here you have a series of different tools you can apply onto your text here. Uh, you can also use this on image layers and other items, by the way. It doesn't have to be text. So let's go ahead and enable this right here. Uh, you can see that we have a red color there. I'm going to change it to something a little less annoying. So using the color picker tool. So here I'll make it more of a deep blue. Increase the size. And depending on how your size is, you'll be able to see it more and more. If we make this color a little bit lighter, it should be easier to see. So you can tell, uh, by default at least, it's a solid colored line that goes all the way around your text. The inner borders and the outer borders for letters like R that would actually have it inside. By default, it's 100% opacity. You can lower that down if you don't want it to be entirely visible and you want to let some of the background fade in. You also have this position tool. By default, it's set to inside, which means taking the base character uh, of the text you're actually stroking on the inner lines, which means you're overriding part of the original text area. Uh, if you change that to outside, it's going to put it uh, basically on the black parts, so any area that was already outside of the original text size. Uh, you'll notice by doing that, though, it does make it very large and blocky, and you may even get some overlap, depending on how high you set your stroke size. And then there's center, which gives you half on the black area and then half on the actual text. So that's stroke. Let's go over to drop shadow. So blending options. So let's add in the drop shadow effect. And depending on your settings, you should see kind of a blurred out image of the original text behind your text. So let's go ahead and add in the drop shadow effect. So when you have a drop shadow, it's got an angle, which is kind of the direction that the drop shadow is going out in. A distance, how big you want the drop shadow to be, or how far do you want the drop shadow to travel. You also have the spread, where if we increase this, there will be more size for your drop shadow effect. Um, now, when you increase the spread, it increases it without increasing the size of the blur. But when you increase the size, you'll notice that the blur effect also enlarges, not just the size of the drop shadow. Now, this is a linear drop shadow, and by the way, the default color for a drop shadow is usually black, because shadows are, of course, black or some shade of gray. But you can really have the drop shadow in any color, just like you can with the stroke. Uh, the difference is, you have an angle, it doesn't go strictly around the outer edges of your text, but it's got both the direction and the blur. Right now we're looking at a linear drop shadow, which has its strongest in the center and then it blurs as it gets to the outer edges. But if you click on the contour down here, you're actually able to get some interesting effects. So if we change this from linear to cone, it gives you a very different distribution of color and lighting for your drop shadow effect. And there's a lot of different options on here. So, so you can come down here, try some of these out, and see if you get a more interesting drop shadow effect than just the simple um, linear drop shadow. And of course, for any of these points on the curve, you can modify them. Now, um, technically speaking, like the normal stroke, you can increase the opacity to 100, which brings it actually quite similar to the stroke, except you still have that slight blur on the outer edges. You still have the control of the contour to give you to give you very different looks than what you might have in a basic stroke. And then the angle controls what direction the drop shadow effect is going to be taking place in. Just to show one more cool effect down here, uh, noise, you can add this if you want to get uh, a very staticky looking effect on your drop shadow text. Probably not going to be commonly used, but it's another option that's available for you guys there. But just quickly going back to stroke, you can see that there are only a few settings here really, so strokes are for much simpler effects. When you don't want blur, you don't need an angle, you just want it to statically go around the edges of your text with a single color in an equal distribution. 
So that pretty much covers the differences between Stroke and Drop Shadow in the context of Photoshop and how to use them. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future Photoshop content.